two years before it ended up having them, it would have been in a much stronger place to win. And so what the Commonweal is really looking to do, amongst a lot of other things, but the reason we're here tonight is to talk about how we can continue that infrastructure, how we can help um, people who've been empowered by the referendum become politicised, how we can help continue to empower them, give them the tools to effect change within their own societies, but also across Scotland as a whole. So um, I, I introduce myself. My name is Phil Connor. I, I work within the, the Commonweal local branch of, uh, of Commonweal itself. Um, uh, Commonweal started about a year and a half ago. I, I moved back to Scotland from London, where I'd been living for six years, working around Westminster for three or four of those. I moved back uh, to Scotland a year ago to work specifically on the Commonweal. And um, the, the most interesting political debates and meetings I've had in my entire career have been in that year since I've been back in Scotland, not down at Westminster, not what's happening there, but uh, meetings like this around the country and over the past year. Um, I'll let the introduce yourself. Yeah. Ha hello everyone, uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Um, brilliant. Uh, absolute pleasure to be here uh, in the room tonight. Like Phil says, we've been touring the country over the past couple of weeks and the response we've had has been absolutely like sensational. Like people in different towns and villages across Scotland asking if we could put on a meeting here and there um, and it's completely blown us away as I'm sure the political atmosphere across Scotland has blown everyone away post-referendum um, and I think we've all got to like, realise that we've got still a massive potential for change in Scotland. Um, so my name is Liam O'Hare, um, I am a writer um, with Common Space which is the soon to be launched um, media part of Commonweal. Uh, we're launching a digital media service uh, which you'll hear a little bit more about later and hopefully um, hear about how you can become involved in that as well if anyone's interested in that. Um, I've been involved uh, mostly with Radical Independence um, which some of you might know about um, and some of you might have even been at the conference uh, last week from the beginning and more recently with Commonweal um, looking to see how we can continue keep this movement going and how we can continue to actually affect change in Scotland just now. So I think Phil's going to run through the presentation that we've got here just now. Um, that'll be quite brief, it'll just give a kind of explaining um, all about what Common Real is, what we're doing, where we're looking to go. But the most important part of tonight is to actually see what are the issues um, here and how can we as a kind of team based around the country act as a resource for anything that you guys want to campaign on. Um, so the format of the evening definitely isn't meant to be us kind of saying this is what we do, this is what we stand for. It's more about hearing from you guys, how can we support anything that you guys want to do um, and things like that. So just to kind of give you a bit of context with that. So I'll hand over to Phil. It'd be really good for us just to hear from the floor, just uh, your name and maybe why you're here. Uh, anyone like to go first? Don't be shy. Even just your name, it'd be, it'd be good for us. We don't want it to be us talking to you, we want it to be a two-way conversation. Thank you. My name is Maureen Beatty uh, and uh, I've felt for a long time, by that I mean probably the best part of 50 years, that um, we should be running our own country, we should have control of our own land, there should be more people living on this land, working on the land, and actually um, just getting the full benefit of all the resources that Scotland has to offer. We could have really cheap energy. We've got, you know, bags of stuff. They've just discovered a way of how to store the uh, electric energy, like the wind power energy, which was always a problem before. And I'm really pleased that it was discovered just up the door to Glasgow University. And, you know, um, we, we should really be pushing for all these things. It should have been done back in 1970. They had the technology for wave power. It never happened. The money was not given for the pilot project. And I remember that long back that we could have been in a much better position now if that had been done. Good. I, that could be a good thing for us to discuss later on. Anyone else? Hi, uh, my name is Ian, I'm a company director of Salt. I've worked overseas and worked you know, basically all over the place. And I think for me, the fundamental thing is realising 
when, when you do live outside of the UK and you escape from what we just believe is the norm, if I grew up in the same way as works, I, and you essentially have the, the heart of a ripped out of the community and, and all the jobs going, massive employment is basically just normal. And therefore, when you live outside of that, and you see how a society can be ordered, rather than for the benefit of the people that live in it, rather than people who just swoop in and take the profits and go, you kind of start to think, hey, well, we, we should have that ourselves. We really should. I think, for me, the fundamental thing about the common deal, or the, the Jimmy Foundation, I'd like to, if you're going to explore the relationship between the two organisations, I'd like to know a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you will have to take your questions afterwards. Yes, absolutely. I think, for me, fundamentally, the thing is when we start talking about not just what do we want in terms of running our own affairs in the country? But why? What do we want to do different? What do we want to do better? How can we improve it? That's where it starts to get exciting. That's where it starts to get interesting. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. I don't know if this is working. Working? Uh, is it working all right? Yeah. But uh, well, I think. I see the situation really as, as two questions. It's not just a question of independence, it's not having independence, the political independence, it's important to have economic independence as well. And initially, when I, when I was involved in the campaign, I thought that it would be a question of fighting the uh, political issue first, and then fighting for economic independence, fighting for changes in the economy. Myself and, and another chap wrote a book on the economic struggle and the currency, which was a, an issue that rose very much in the, in the campaign. What I've seen actually is to some extent very surprising, because to some extent, although we didn't win the political battle in the referendum, and I'm challenging that at the moment because I think to some extent there was a fiddle in the process and I'm inquiring about that, not getting a lot of help from people who should be given us answers. But putting that to one side, uh, we didn't win that battle. Um, but what did happen, very surprisingly for me, was that the political issue has now become very hot and very important. And I think to some extent we've got to work on that considerably because it's going to relate back to the other. Yes. Thanks. Hello there, um, can everybody hear? Yep. Uh, I'm Stephen, how do you do? Uh, I'd just like to say that um, for the first 20 odd years of my life, I absolutely love Scotland, I'm great to be part of it. For the next uh, 10, 15 years, I came to hate Scotland, hated its politics, hated its people. Uh, how's that first start? Uh, <laughs> but and I, I would happily have emigrated to the Christmas on the city. But then the, this referendum uh, turned up. I turned from being a no voter to being a yes voter. And one of the reasons for that was because I came across the Common Mail and everything in the Common Mail book spoke to me. And I suddenly realised, wait a minute, there's a lot going on in Scotland and it's, under, it's in the shadows. Uh, and it's coming out of the shadows. At last, people are, like me are actually standing up and speaking out. We've got a chance of making Scotland into what we want wanted to be, what it always was, to be perfectly honest with you. But it's been wrong promise, and never going to get it back. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really good place to start, I think. Uh, and I'm also obliged to say you can buy the book that he was talking about over there at the side for five pounds or you can uh, get the ebook online for just a small donation. Um, I should probably, I, I start off by saying what the common wheel is. Uh, we describe ourselves as a, a think and do tank. So the think tank element, element of that encompasses research and, and policy work that we produce and uh, lobbying the high levels of government. And the do part of that is where we, it's probably the, to me the more important part where we actually we campaign for what we want to see put into practice and we, we organise locally to try and put pressure on the government and other bodies to, to change. And someone last night in Camel Town described it as a, a community focused think tank, which 
I think is a really nice way to, to put it. Um, what do we stand for? Um, well, Commonwealth means uh, for the common well-being of everyone or, or for the, the common good. And so the idea of that is that through pulling our resources um, and, and through sort of rebalancing society so that everyone's more equal, we create a fairer and better society for all. That's why our, our logo is the scales balance, because the idea of sort of evening up society where there's not a society where we need to have so many food banks on one hand, but other people aren't paying their proper share of capital gains or business tax on, on the other hand. And, and again, our, our slogan, all of us first, um, is because we think to, to get there, we need to move away from the me first brand of politics, that we've been, which is how we've been doing it for so long. And, uh, and, and move to a fairer, sort of more redistributive, I'm not going to be able to say that word now, redistributive policy. Um, and I think that echoes what I've said. We're trying to answer the question, what does a better Scotland look like? And so um, we, we have a lot of research that's coming from academics, policy work, that, that's all led into this, this book that I was talking about and, and all, our, uh, all the policies that are on our website. And so the idea is that we, um, we create something which is practical, um, a practical idealism, so to speak. So the idea is that we are looking for positive ways to change society in ways which, uh, which has been done around the country and around the, the globe already. So it's practical because it's been tried and tested. There's, no, uh, there's nothing in the book which hasn't been tried, at least at some point around the world, and being shown to work in that situation. And so the idea is that we then are, are not creating anything that's, that's not been done before. Um, it's positive because where we criticise, we, um, we suggest better alternatives. Um, and it's pluralistic because we work with all parties and none. Um, I should also add in there, I, I think that it's, um, it's holistic in that we realise that there's sort of, there's no change in the social without a change in the, the economic, no change in the economic without a change in the cultural. And uh, one of our criticisms of the, the Smith report um, it is that it's not given a balancing up of that. And so uh, maybe we'll come on to sort of the Smith report a little bit later. Um, we, uh, we've got a team, that, this is slightly out of date, this presentation, we've got a team of 15 staff just now. And so it, uh, if there's one thing I want you to take away from the presentation tonight, it's that everything I'm telling you about already exists. We have a, a funding stream in place at the moment where we have an annual income of almost £150,000. We're spending that solely on staff and technology, and, and that's all accessible to you. The, the Commonwealth is a transparent organisation, and it's approachable because we, we want your input on everything that we do, from policy to advocacy to journalism and, and content to, uh, to what's happening locally. Um, and so at the moment we've got over 30 local groups around the country and we're currently on this tour speaking to them all, seeing what's happening locally and then that's going to feed back into the policies that we're producing. Um, I'll just skip past this. As it's, uh, so what are we doing just now? There's, uh, there's four main strands to, to what comprises the common wheel. Uh, there's advocacy, policy, content and sort of common wheel local. Uh, and so the idea is that all of these are working together to, um, to push towards this rebalance, this uh, all of us first Scotland. I'll talk very briefly about each of them. First of all, there's the policy units. We have full -time, two full-time researchers working solely on policy. Um, the idea, again, like I say, is that they're accessible. So. Uh, my email is phil at common.scot, Liam is Liam at common.scot. If you want to email someone in the policy unit to talk about policy, to maybe develop policy around uh, something that's happening locally, you email someone from the team, and so it's just their first name at common.scot, so it'd be Miriam for this. We can, I can share this later on. There's the, the advocacy, which is, we have a, one full-time lobbyist at Holyrood, and she's there to, to sort of bend the ears of MSPs, get a feel on the ground for what's possible to get through Parliament. Uh, and so we work, we're working with what, what's been proposed by the Smith Commission, were it to be full independence, but at the moment we're working with what's, what's practical, what's possible at the moment, which are these three bills, the Community Empowerment, Land Reform, 
and the participatory democracy, um, because that's what's on the table at the moment. That's, these are things that are already going through Parliament. And again, her name's Ash, so if you wanted to contact her, you needed a, an MSP or Ben, then you could email her directly. Um, do you want to talk about common space just now, or do you want to come on to it? Yeah, afterwards? I'm happy to talk about it just now. Um, so I guess like part of the, uh, the narrative of the independence campaign, as we all know, um, was focused around the media. Um, I think that developed as, as things transpired um, and as people got more engaged um, in the campaign, people started to realise that actually um, something was a bit amiss here. Um, what we felt on the ground um, wasn't being reflected in what we read in the papers, what we saw on our TVs, what we heard on the radio. Um, unfortunately, we didn't, and despite like, great efforts on social media um, and people really starting to build their own media through like, fantastic initiatives and websites, etc. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to challenge, really challenge that before the referendum. But what we've now got, I think, is time, is space to really start to build these things, hopefully. So when things come around next time, um, we'll be in a lot more of a stronger position. Um, that's, what, that's what we want to do um, through Common Space. Um, we're going to be launching um, in December, uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to do a soft launch before Christmas. Um, which will basically be a kind of beta whereby we'll test things out, we'll see how, how it works and then we'll launch fully come January. Um, I'm one of five journalists, we've got an editor, um, we are already doing journalism basically to get ready for launch um, come December and what we'll be doing is doing news on a daily basis. Um, so basically doing news in the morning, working right through, doing features um, and trying to get out some of the stories and some of the communities. And I guess it's twofold. Um, one being challenging what's in the mainstream, um, giving another narrative to what we read in the mainstream um, in terms of the mainstream politics, but also giving a focus to kind of community news. The fact that there's so many great initiatives going on around Scotland um, in our own communities, yet there isn't really an outlet for them. People don't really hear. And I think once you do hear about them, people get inspired by those examples that do take place. So what we want to do um, is elevate some of the voices and elevate some of the stories from around different communities in Scotland so that everybody can see what's going on on a national level and hopefully people can feed off each other. And that links in um, to the second part of Common Space. Um, one is the news, media, video side of things. The other is creating a platform online, um, basically a community online, a kind of social network, if you like, whereby people within the progressive movement in Scotland can collaborate um, and can discuss and join campaigns with each other. So that will be a facility whereby people can join and sign up um, and say, I want a campaign on this, who wants to join me? And then you'll have a ready-made network of people that exist there already. So that's a brief overview um, of Common Space and what we're trying to do. Obviously, I'm sure everyone's seen um, over the past week the massive success of the National coming out. Um, and what a fantastic initiative that is. I think we can all say we're totally delighted to see that. It's very much needed. Um, and I think it's fantastic news that that's now going to be continuing um, um, post, post this week. So that's a brilliant initiative. We are hopefully going to complement that um, as another um, as basically another project that's going to exist in digital forum. Um, and I think it's really exciting times in terms of media in Scotland just now. I think it's very, very much needed, very, very much essential. But I think what we can do, hopefully, um, by having a kind of approach which involves everybody um, in creating media and in putting ideas across, we can hopefully move to, a step, uh, move to a place whereby we're in a lot stronger position in terms of the sort of news that we get as the actual news that people want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Michael, who's one of our journalists, um, also wrote for the, the National a comment piece yesterday. Some of you might have seen it. Um, it was regarding the SNP's proposals. Um, so he's written for them. Again, in terms of the network of people involved in media in Scotland just now, we're meeting people every day. And what the real kind of beauty of it, I think, is everybody's kind of pulling in the one direction. Um, there's not really this kind of any animosity amongst people or anything like that. What's really brilliant about what's going on just now is that everybody in different initiatives are all working collaboratively and essentially working to try and build a better Scotland. Um, and that sense of collaboration, of community that existed pre-referendum, I think is still continuing to exist in such a, in such a brilliant way. Um, and I think obviously that's something that, that we are going to be trying to keep going um, and ensure that everyone continues to work with each other and collaborate on things together. So.
Thanks, it's really exciting. Um, so where we're strong, where we can complement it, you know, researchers, people in Parliament, we, we, want to, we want to add those strengths into what's already happening locally and where things are already strong on the ground, we want to see how we can fit in with them, keep those networks going and, and um, complement them where we best can. Um, we can talk about that a little bit more later. What can we do? What's happening locally? Um, I, I think the idea is that we want to continue the groundswell and, uh, and, and draw more people into the, to the movement. Because if, if we are talking about the 45, then we want it to expand from that. You know what I mean? How do we get people who, who are interested in the referendum but um, might see Commonwealth as a, as a yes orientated group, which, which is it's like, it's actually not. It's a, policy first uh, and I think that's one of the best ways that we can actively engage people is that we talk about the issues, we, we win the social justice arguments and that's, that's to me what's much more important than the, uh, the actual structure and there may be three things that we, we feel that can be done locally and, and these are already things that are happening um, in order to kind of draw people in and, and maintain the, the momentum that we built up and um, the first would be sort of Educatory events, so inviting people to come and talk, um, book reading groups. Uh, I know a lot of groups have already started doing sort of reading groups on the Colmwheel book, which we think is a really great initiative. And uh, my personal favourite would be somewhere where I'm not very strong, which is sort of economics. I, I don't think I'd be very, very persuasive on that, but I, and I think that was uh, true for a lot of people. Maybe we can look at doing sort of education around economics seminars on that, that kind of idea. It's something that sort of by educating ourselves then we go out and educate others and, and sharing our strengths and that's one of the things that hopefully common space will, will help to do. The second would be actions, it's, this is probably the most obvious strand of what's happening locally, things you're doing already, you know, sort of campaigns that, uh, that are local or that uh, are Scotland wide and, and sort of by impacting on the local that then impinges on what's happening around Scotland. Um, if, I think what we want to do later on is, is talk about what's happening locally, uh, it's really, really interesting for us, and to talk about maybe how the Commonwealth can complement any campaigns that you've already got going locally or, or would like to start. Um, and then lastly, there's just discussion. I think the best way for drawing new people into the, uh, into the kind of the, the dynamic, talking about politics, is, is discussion. So, just groups where, you, where you're talking about <coughs> politics or, or you're doing things that don't seem overtly political, music or you know, social events, and, and, and to then kind of add a small element of discussion into them. And I think that's, that's why I found personally the most empowering thing about the, the last year or so is, is the discursive element. Um, I think, yeah, that, that sums up what we're going to say. Thanks very much for, uh, for speaking. This is just a wee event we did at the Arches um, in Glasgow last year. Um, what would we do now? Um, so, <laughs> um, so I guess like from here, um, maybe if there's any questions from the floor or any points, then maybe this would be the time to take them if anyone actually wants to know a wee bit more in detail about anything the Commonwealth does or how you can get involved in that. And then it might be an idea, and obviously this is up to Ali, to maybe split into groups. Uh, to talk about local issues or something, I don't know if you want to propose that. I can also that. be able to 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 be to be able to be able to be to be able 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 to be to be able 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 to we split up in smaller groups that day actually because yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. any questions or comments? One one question is maybe about the structure of what you're planning in the, the common space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I've part of a few different organisations, one the Computer Society has a particularly good model for encouraging uh, kind of stuff to be produced that actually then can go on to be enhanced in the, 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 the group as a whole, which is to set up special interest groups. I can imagine that if you actually wanted to get everybody to sit down and get down technical with community finance or credit unions or something like that, you'd leave a lot of people behind very quickly. Similarly, people, some folks just aren't going to be interested in the legislative programme or any of these systems. 
at our units to set up specialist groups as well as the general community so that people who are interested and technical in a particular field can come together and do what you can. Um, I guess yes, to answer that, like, I wouldn't, uh, in terms of the technical side of things, um, I'm no expert on that to be perfectly honest with you, um, but I think in terms of what common space will be, um, it will be a space whereby people that want to get involved in a certain campaign, um, say every, all the big national campaigns in Scotland such as CND, um, campaigns against the arms trade, will have a page on Common Space um, whereby people can go and get involved in that particular campaign. Um, again, anyone that's particularly interested in finance could go and get involved in that space as well. So when people sign up to Common Space, there'll be a list of boxes essentially that people can tick in terms of their interests and then you, we'll have the facility to put people together that are interested in, 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 in certain things like that. So it's all about, that's the, that organised element of common space will all be about essentially providing a facility and a network for people to collaborate, um, whether that's on a community local level or whether that's somebody from Elgin to Dumfries that share a similar interest and sort of similar expertise. We hope to try and provide that space um, for people to do. So it kind of fits into, I guess, everything that we're trying to do. It's not to dictate anything, but to try to put infrastructure in place, whether that's online, whether that's in physical infrastructure in terms of the commons <coughs> that I was working on, so that essentially the movement can, can hopefully be as strong as it possibly can. Yeah. Just say that, that also feeds into the policy work that we're doing, how we want the policy work to be participative, um, where uh, if, if people do have sort of experience in a certain area, then that can feed into our policy work on there. So I think it works around that too. And any other questions? Okay, um, just to add, um, and, and I was just thinking about the new, the, the model for the new is forward. The new shop that's opened is called forward, but the new is going backwards. And the problem is the council, we can't get even the salt higher up, the flag, the flag of Scotland, and they've stopped it. So I think, how does the grass group thing, would they help you challenge that? I mean, we now know we have to do it and get a group and march up to the council, whatever it is, or up the hill and put the bloody salt higher up. <laughs> And to hell with them. The best thing about the Highland Mary with the cone, the cone in her head, and I've got it on my Facebook, and they should keep the cone in her head so we should get the salt tire back, and somehow the common wheel would help us. You, you would do the involved in that. Sorry, there we go. Oh, I'm sure you know it. I don't know. I think. What we want to do is, is help groups around the country sh share best practice and share their experience. And that's one of the things that Common Space can do. So if, if people have had success of just marching up and doing something like that, then you can share that. And, and then if people think that's the best idea, then you know, go for it. But if other groups have found other ways of ta taking on their local council, then hopefully you can take heart from the way that they've we'll, been successful. We'll, we'll find you an expert in Gorilla Flag techniques, right? And send, send them up to you, right? <laughs> If we could get a group of 200 people to march up there and we'll put the salt tire, I don't know if I could climb up still. I would be right there. I don't mind getting with it either. <laughs>
Chrome is full that launch against from Glasgow and then the, the same age as Jimmy, so late fifties or late forties. You may well you may well have come to Castle Tower and we have an obscenity at the moment whereby Castle Tower, which is trying to be bought out um, as a, a community buyout, uh, has been stifled by the intransigence of the council who don't have vision. Now, what I see all around right here for the vision and how they want to improve things. So it's really important that early next week you'll be getting information on Castle Tower and it would be great for the common wheel to disseminate that throughout Scotland because Glasgow Corporation had the foresight to purchase a, and inherit, in a sense, a Castle Tower. Hundreds of a, youngsters from Glasgow, from the housing schemes in Glasgow, have been joined. A castle Tower as, as, as other areas within our Bellevue for outdoor activities when they're at school. Um, and we are turning, turning, closing it down and not only really support a, well, over our dead bodies, but we will be supporting, we will be making sure that they get the necessary funding to keep Castle Tower open. But we need a wider audience, and that's a great thing for the common good, and we need the Yes campaign. It's all your money, me as an elected member. I've got to be accountable to you and the great thing is with the new common bill and the yes campaign is that accountability, the folk that are sitting in the council offices, the ones that are sitting in Holyrood as well, the MPs and the ones that are free in Brussels, these people need to wake up because we're not going to take any more garbage from them in the sense of how they administer us. So it's people power at the real extreme here and we've got to make sure that we, we turn things on its head and we will turn things on its head eh, as the weeks and months go ahead eh, and, and go forward because that's really what the message has to be. So for things like Castle Tower, for the eh, encroachment into eh, Greenbelt, eh, with regard to fisheries, with regard to all these topics, we've all got to get one common, common we will get together and, and take it forward and take them to task. Me as a councillor, take me to task if you think I'm doing things wrong or voting the wrong way. But for those others who most definitely do vote the wrong way, we have to take them to task. So we prepare to go on 59 entries head in sight in May 2015, and that's the start eh, of, of what's going to be a transition for Scotland. So I'm going to shut up. Thank you. <laughs> Basically, just want to know what's going on and you talked about the local group and what's going on. What is, where is the local group based? Is, uh, is it, I'm new to this. Where's the local group based? What's the current points of discussion? What's the current points of action? How is it fit into the larger picture? I'm going to answer this one. The local group, this, this is the start of the local group. This is the second meeting um, that the Commonwealth has had um, and it's been supported well on both occasions. Um, this, this is why we need to take the time this evening to really say what do we want, what do we need, what's our understanding of what's going on locally um, and what do we feel energised about moving things forward with. So really this group is going to have ownership of how it moves forward um, and it would be good if we could spend a bit of time actually getting this feedback about what the issues are and what's our understanding of the local area. What, well, and speaking to Gordon, I think would be a really good starting point about what's actually going on that we really don't even know about. Things like that. 
Um, that way we're going to educate ourselves about what the book is all about, and then we're going to be able to tell other people what the book is all about, what the common rules all about, and then we can bring more people into our group talking. I think that's the, the starting point, is talking. And I'm a wee bit afraid we might start going, going down to the political groups before we're actually off the ground, but I'm also aware that we need to get off the ground pretty quickly. Um, that's, that's all I'd like to say, just let's start reading, let's share it, and let's support people into the reading. Steve just said there are too many political routes. I have no uh, problem about wondering. Radical movements are full of radical people. And because they're radical, the movements are radical, the difficulty of staying together becomes quite in fact a feature. Is there any way that the Commonwealth and the radical independents and the SNP and the SFP and the Greens and so on can get accounts together? so they can sit and make sure that they all manage to stay on the same track. I mean, the history of politics is the history of radical organisations splitting up. And, uh, is there any thought to get it together? I, I, I don't know what you might call it. A Scottish common law, a Scottish national convention or something that could all be out and all of these just to be friendly manner. Yeah, um, I, well, I, there was a slide actually that I did use, which um, which is basically the video that was drawn before, which is a, a board, uh, and our board constitutes people from right, people from National Collective, um, an MSP, um, people, the, the director of the Electoral Forum Society of Scotland, so people from kind of across Scotland. So I think that's one of the ways that we, we make sure that we link up with what's happening across all these other organisations. Um, I, I think that the other way that, that we do that, and I mean, I, I actually really like your idea of kind of getting together and having a kind of a, a, a constitutional convention on what we're going to do. But, um, but the, the other way that we do it is, I think a lot of organisations see Commonweal as a kind of policy umbrella where they feed into it on, on their specific areas. So maybe women for independence or gender issues or radical independence where they have expertise and, and Commonweal because, uh, like I say, our, our policy can be shaped by, by others, then that's the way that we kind of keep them on board. Um, I don't know if you Yeah, maybe just to add, um, like, I d it's, it's a very important point, I think. I think we have been, got used to being kind of unified um, over the past couple of years, um, and now we're at a point where there is lots of organisations. Now, there is a lot of collaboration amongst them, like, for instance, I've been in radical independence for years and Commonweal, for instance. So in terms of personnel, there's a lot of crossover, as I'm sure there is in this room, that people are members of more than one group. Um, because that's been the beauty of the Yes campaign, I think. Um, and it has been its diversity, has been its breadth, has been um, all of this. Um, but I do think just now as well that what Commonweal want to do um, is put forward the kind of policy platform whereby we can move forward and keep people together around a set of core principles essentially. So leading up to probably more 2016 Scottish Parliament election, um, after doing wide consultation with people, after hopefully getting ideas from the grassroots up, we can try to formulate some kind of manifesto if you like, although we're not a party so it wouldn't be a manifesto, but some kind of set of policies um, that we would then hope everybody in Scotland could get behind, um, whether they be political parties, whether they be campaigns, whether they be just individuals that say, I support the principles of the common wheel. And that's a way that hopefully we can try and keep people, people unified as well. But we're going to have disagreements as well, I think. And I think that needs to be you know, understood and I think that's going to be healthy. Um, I think we need to be critical of each other as well. And we need to have those, but we need to have those in a fashion um, that understands that we're all trying to move in the right direction and we might just vary about, about ways to get there. Give people a bit of an idea of um, other things that are happening in Logan. They've actually got like, a, 
Um, they've got a group, Grants Roots Group, um, which is um, various yes, um, organisations. They came to the meeting on Tuesday in Oban and really were actually up and running about what they wanted to do, but they want to work with the common wheel to take that forward. So I think it's also very important that we understand what other people are doing in Argyll and how the connections are being made. That's already been done through common wheel Argyll and Duke. So there's people in Oban, there's people in Campbelltown, there's people in Mid Argyll, here, Helensborough. Um, but they need to be informed by local people about how this is actually being moved forward. So whether it's Stephen's idea about you know, really informing ourselves about what the common wheel is, whether it's actually catching up with Gordon and finding out well, actually what's going on locally, um, as a group we need to begin to decide. And I don't think it's deciding and that's it. I think we'll change, we'll add in, we'll amend as we go. But I think we need to begin to work out what is common wheel and how can it benefit us. I guess then there's been a proposal as well to maybe split up into groups if people think that might be a good idea. I know uh, there was one suggestion around education, I'll come to you just in a sec, about maybe an education group. Yeah. That could be one group, um, and then maybe it could be others around issues. So if anyone's got any ideas that would like to bring up. Um, it's uh, but I <coughs> think we're already doing our what we've been doing here in the We have consistent of the IHOP. Um, it's a very similar concept to come to itself. There's a lot of people that are very active and actually taking on the government and trying to get what really took place with the referendum. Uh, we are we are really one of the first shops in Scotland to be created after the Yes campaign. And I didn't know I was coming to a common wheel meeting as this is the group. I thought I was coming along to meet the common wheel and hang out. I didn't know this was actually the group itself. And I'm you know, a wee bit uncomfortable with that. Um, is that it? It's not this isn't a defined group. That's I don't think that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing we're coming along to get information from Liam Bill about common wheel owners and it's just moved on to so but I think there is something about saying what, what, do, what do we want to do with Commonwealth? Do we want to use Commonwealth? Do we want to, as you see, there's already examples of a lot of work going on the ground. So I think it's been clear what, what do we want to do with Commonwealth local um, and actually what does this group think that that should be? It's not saying that this group is Commonwealth, it's how can it be important locally to then you know, do something with Commonwealth. Um, so it is very much still a good I've got one then. Um, for a number of years I've been involved with the consultation of King Tim Burnsville in terms of the And uh, on Monday I went following and I tackled the committee directly. And I had to do the mention of following but a lot of the contributions. Because what has been proposed now within the bill is going to eviscerate all the previous legislation go back to 1892 with no powers coming to the community at all, they're being, they're being held within local authorities and by the other. There's no community environment within that section whatsoever. I also can understand that the Commonwealth doesn't really have a good growing or alliance, grand strategy policy for the planet. Would that be something that would be an interest in, in, in the growing food in, in the coming years is definitely your social justice issue? Because people are going to have to eat. And with war cuts coming down the line, people are going to have to have access to land to grow the food that they need to eat. And it's something that I've been involved with quite a while, but I think it's getting much more pressing as the time goes on. As time goes on. Does Commonwealth have, have any sets within their farm area? That's not an answer to the way that food is going to be a social justice issue. Yeah, and already is. Yeah. Um, what you say actually is, is something that's been echoed by some other groups I've met around the country talking about growing food and then giving it to social workers to, to give out. And I think you're right in that that's a new policy where we could actually do with expertise with what's already happening locally and, and how we can kind of spread that out around the country and, and create the sort of the uh, create framework or within government for that to happen. So I, I absolutely that's that's the area that we can look into. If 
I I think it would be a little bit of a tension for all people. Yeah. Um, I just to your first issue uh, that you were talking about, I think I addressed that point quite well. But yeah. like I said, we're not here to take over. We're looking to see where we're strong and where we can help, and, and that's the uh, that's the point of kind of presentation, just to show the structure of us and how it can fit in what we already have. Absolutely. Information about common feel and how we share that and yeah, what yeah. could be. Yeah. So, Dave, over here, if people want to come and talk around about stuff that's happening locally and how common feel could be involved in that, um, and also in terms of how we move forward, information about common feel um, and how we share that and all, is Stephen over there. And really, we're just, uh, to take Alice's point, we're really just trying to get some feedback from people about how this could actually work locally. Um, so, it's very much the Taking notes and getting feedback from people, and that's the purpose of So, um, Liz, um, with assistance, is going to take that forward for us. With assistance, I said. So, that will be out, so people can like it because that's where you're going to get um, local information. Jim? Uh, as I was just going to say, when the put up is up for the flag, uh, I hope that we'll put all you people together <laughs> you know, already when we get that up in the... Uh, yes, we're all going to get arrested, all 200 <laughs> 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 Just to be the quest of the Facebook page is a page and not community because you don't see on the feed communities. So if you can make it a page that you like rather than a community that you join, that'd be great. <laughs> That's great. So you know about that. No, <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank really want to promote this too much, but the, the forward shot we have across the road there, we're trying very, 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 very hard to make it as welcoming as possible and as completely non-partisan as possible. Um, that, that, that everybody and anybody is allowed in there to have a point of view and we can listen to you and so on. So don't let anybody be put off with like maybe this is an SNB shot or whatever. It's a, it's a community hub. We're going to accommodate as many local community organisations as we can with the information and so on. And it requires funding, and if you want to come along for a right good hooli, come along to the Pipe Band Hall tomorrow night where we've got a concert and all the rest of it on. And the money from the concert that we raise tomorrow night goes to keep that fairly expensive shop across the road open. So, but then basically, please come in, and uh, I think a big hand should be afforded uh, to Alison for organising tonight's show. If not, then we'll, we'll break into boots, I guess. 